part two interview, Power of Choice, with Minnesota star Titania Marlin. Let's continue to take a deeper dive or a further look into how a star was born. Now you mentioned college a few times while you were speaking, so let's get into that. Tell us about the recruitment process, um, getting recruited to go to college. First of all, I know a lot of people from the same area, and they decided not to go to, to college, or or they said that they didn't have the opportunity. So how were you able to get the exposure? to get the opportunity to be recruited and what was that process like and why did you choose minnesota hey hey go for all the way <laughs> <laughs> um so uh so you mentioned um other person from my community not not going to college or whatever right and a lot of them do go to college um but the thing is if you think about it um your our circumstance is already hard, right? And so it's like maybe they don't know. I mean, I gotta be be giving them all the benefit I can give them. They don't know how to get it, how to figure it out or whatever, right? But um I would say that the things I had to do, not everyone is willing to do that. Not everyone is willing to wake up at five four thirty in the morning while going to bed at one. Hmm. Listen, I, I had paved roads and the school bus picked me up at the corner of where I used to live. And it was hard for me to even do that. I went to sleep at nine, woke up at eight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so not everyone was willing to, um, you know, wake up that early to go to school and then go to bed that late. You know, while, because the funny thing is in high school, I had to, I mean, you could do anything you want in high school. You could BS your stuff. You could do good, whatever you want to do. But growing up, I always wanted to be the best. I think that's like a little, um, you know, selfish thing sometimes. I wanted to be the best in all I do. And so in school, we did the system where you like first, second, third, like what your grade were, like you're the top in your class or whatever, right? And so through um, basic straight to... Um, eighth grade I would come first in my class um and that was something I would ask, I would work so hard because guess what and my mom and my family they're like they're like geniuses because they didn't have it right they didn't have money to just give me everything I want but guess what I was able to ask for one big thing every year and so I would say I want a cell phone if I come first in my class I want a computer if I come first in my class. I want this, I want that. I, whatever that one big thing is, I would ask for it, but I would try to come in first in my class. So in grade nine, <laughs> I came second in my class um, and I cried so hard because, you know, that one big goal I was gonna get, I'm not gonna get it no more. <laughs> so, you know, I was disappointed, but um, one thing my uncle said to me, he said, your uncle, this is Shorty you talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah, would be she like... Had a, she had a very uh, good example with her family. Her family really, really set a good example for her. It was really, it's amazing. But anyway, continue. They did. Yeah. My uncle said to me that day, because he took me and my grandma to my school to get my report card. Mm -hmm. And I was crying so hard. So he was like... Because he didn't come in to the, to the office with us. And so... When I got in the car and I was crying, he was like asking, asking his mom, my grandma, like what happened? And she was like, oh, she came second. So my uncle was like, you're crying this hard. I, I, I came second to last when I was in high school and I was so happy I was in last. You came second to first and you cried. <laughs> so those kind of things, even though I was crying, I was like kind of trying to laugh, but I was like, I couldn't laugh because I was like still so hurt about it. But it's like, you know, I would attach goals or like achievements like if I come first I'll get this thing or whatever the case may be so um head into college now so when I was in grade 11 I realized that um well grade 10 I switched events from the sprints to the 400 and I was getting so good at it like every weekend I'll be doing better and better and better now 
for track and I guess for most sports are that, you know, once your once your times improve, once your skill improve, people start looking at you. They start noticing things. And so at Even that point, there. yeah. Okay. At that point, um, you know, I was in Jamaica. So, you know, co- colleges in Jamaica were looking and overseas were looking. I don't know how the overseas one saw anything because I was so clueless about the internet or what. I mean, I know the internet, but I didn't know that, oh, everything is on the internet for them to see your times or whatever. I only thought the internet was there to um, do assignments or, <laughs> you know, go on Facebook or whatever the case may be. But um, they were able to see my times, see my races, see those videos and everything that I wasn't really aware of. And so in grade 11, that's where things really started to change. And that so from seven, from eight, when I started track through 10, I had a different coach. So Mr. Campbell was the only constant coach I had. He was the head coach. He didn't really coach me directly, but he was always there to like, you know, give advice and whatever. Because He was the head coach. He was a coach like the throwers and stuff. But in grade 11, we got a new coach, Mr. Williams. Mr. Um, Williams also led you to meet your husband, right? Is that, is that he true? Did. He did. Okay. All right. Well, let's, let's continue this yeah. So um, <clears throat> Mr. Williams um, changed school, come to our school to be a teacher and a coach. Um, so he came in September, um, 20, 2011, uh, 2010, yeah. So September for 2010, we're like just starting grade 11 or whatever. And, you know, he gave this big speech, whatever, whatever, whatever. And so then when he came, I was just doing the 400, nothing, nothing crazy going on, just improving each weekend as I, as I was able to. And so now he came and he was like, you know what? I'm going to have you run the, the 800 as well. In my head, I was like, man, I just started to figure out how to do one lap. No, I got to do two? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I yeah. just figured out how to do one. No, I got to do two. But, you know, it was the coach and I, ha- I had to, um, I had to listen. I think that's one thing that I had was, um, I didn't really give a lot of resistance to stuff. I... If you say, "Hey, do this," because it will, it will, you know, do this good thing or whatever, I would um, think about it and then do it. I may not question it too much, but I'll try it. And if it doesn't work, then I won't do it. It's like sometimes we like question things too much without even trying it. Sometimes, and so I would always try. If I fail at it, then I'm like, "Okay, it's just not for me." So he said, "We're gonna do the 800." We start training for that, but. I was still doing the 400 and doing, you know, one and two, 800 here and there. So the 800 was to build my strength for the 400. But when you're young, you don't know that. You're like, this man just want to give you more races to do or whatever. I didn't know that. But so, yeah, Mr. Williams, you know, he came by and um, he changed my entire training, my entire mental, mental ability when it comes to track. He like, coach everything not just the physical thing like coach you mentally it's like okay this is what you can do believe in yourself you can do it I believe in you you can do it too and so that was really good but I guess one of the big thing was both Mr. William and Mr. Campbell they they started to tell us you guys can go to college for free you can get a scholarship and go to college for free so now I hear free I'm like, okay, what do I got to do to do this, right? They were like, just keep training, increasing your time, improving and, and, and everything you're doing. And recruiters will start looking, coaches will start looking. And so I listened because I was like, first of all, I'm in grade 11. I'm going to do CXC exams. It's college next, right? Where is my mother going to find the money to send me to college? Now I start thinking like an adult because I was like, yo, I got to help my mom figure this out because I'm going to college. I don't want to just go to high school and be done like everybody else that I know, like just go to high school and then start working. Like, no, because then the thing is when I grew up in a rural area and I see people just do the same routine all the time. But then when you go to school in a town, you see kids from different backgrounds who have different goals, different dreams. And now you make friends with these people and they're, they're showing you this different light and you're like, oh, I wasn't thinking that or I didn't know about that or whatever the case may be. And so I use those things I learned from my friends and like from people in, at school, you know, the principal or whatever, whoever it may be, the teachers, 
And I use those things to be like, okay, they're successful. And my coach tell me that I can go to college and be successful. Then what I got to do is just train, train and run. That, that's all I got to do. Keep my grades up, train and run. And so I did that. And then mid, well, so mid grade 11, almost in a grade 11, recruiters start coming around. You have, pre, you know, coaches come into track meets to watch. You don't know who is who. You're just running, doing your thing. Your coach is there talking to somebody. You don't know what you're talking about. You're a kid. You, you stay to yourself. You do your own thing. Don't go mix up in big people's business. Like, you know, you do your own thing. But then we had our Eastern Championship at grade 11. And, you know, I did really good there. Um, it was that like a breaking point of like, okay, you actually have this in you. My times improved. And so... Um, North Northwestern? No, I forget the college all the time. It's in Florida. Nova <laughs> Southeastern University. Yeah. Yes. Nova Southeastern. Um, the coach there, she came, she came to a meet and um, you know, she was recruiting. She was like, Oh, I want you to come to, to my school, whatever, whatever, whatever. And she did her pitch. She showed us like all the little things that you can do there, all this, all these nice things, to be honest. And like, you know, the money package behind it, like all these good things. And I was like, okay. And my coach was like, don't close off your options yet. You know, just like, just keep running. More people are gonna be coming. More are gonna be coming. And so, you know, I was there. Push more people higher. You sit path, you do the work, you get what you desire. Can do what we do in our short space of time, make it look so easy. Yeah. No one, anybody can ask anybody if I say it easy, it would not be for everybody. No, only can you can build feet, don't got this still feet, see out of the way we are. And everybody can do what we do in our short space of time, make it look so easy. Yeah. No one, anybody can ask anybody. If I say it easy, it would not be for everybody. No, only can you can build feet, don't got this still feet, see out of the way we are.